Okay. Assalamu alaikum, brothers and sisters. I hope everyone is well. Uh, we are joined today by Sheikh Mustafa Khattab. Sheikh, assalamu alaikum. How are you? Alaikum assalam. Imran, how are you doing? Very good, Sheikh. Jazakallah khair. How, how, is, uh, how are you finding Ramadan? It's good, it's alhamdulillah. Good. It was Mashallah. snowing the other day here in Canada. So it's always snowing in Canada, isn't it? Mashallah. The weather is nice, alhamdulillah. alhamdulillah. We're moving up into the uh, winter, inshallah, soon. So good news. Mashallah, mashallah. Um, Sheikh, without further ado, I want to, inshallah, today's topic, uh, what I want you to discuss and what I want you to go into is how to study the Quran, right? Uh, it's going to be very specific. Um, we obviously did a live stream together previously where we discussed the clear Quran. And mashallah, the clear Quran translation is gaining in popularity. Many more people are starting to read it. And it's, it's you know, it, 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 it doesn't take much as to figure out why this is the case, mashallah, because, you know, what you've done with the clear Quran, clear Quran translation is you've kept it simple, you've used simple English, you know, you've uh, broken down the, the Quran into passages so it's easy to follow, thematic passages. And you've given many other sort of keys and guides within the Quran as well to help a non-Muslim reader, but even a Muslim reader to better understand the Quran, uh, along with your footnotes, which really helps clarify things further, mashallah. So obviously the first step, you know, when it comes to studying the Quran for a Western audience, for a Muslim audience that, that for, for whom Arabic is not their first language, right, um, who does, don't understand the Arabic language, who want to study the Quran, it could be very, very challenging, right? And the very first point of call, obviously, is people think, okay, let's pick up a translation of the Quran and let's read the translation of the Quran. Now, that's a good step. But when it comes to actually developing a study program for yourself to study the Quran and understand the words of Allah in depth, what would you suggest? How would you go about it? Exactly. So let, let me give you the big picture, right? <coughs> Not just the small pixel. So basically, we know that, you know, in Islam, we have five pillars, Arkanul Islam, right? And it seems to me that, uh, you know, we do a lot of preparations for, you know, the different pillars of Islam, but not for Ramadan. I'll give mm -hmm. you a couple of examples. So for Shahada, the first pillar, when someone comes to take Shahada, of course, they don't just pop up. No, they take time to read, ask questions when they decide to accept Islam if they're convinced. You know, they take a shower, they go to the masjid, they make an appointment, and ashhadu, they become Muslim. For salah namaz, you wait for the time to come in, you make wudu, you go to the masjid or you pray home at home, you know, you do some preparations. For zakah, you count the nisab, the money stayed with you for a year. Who are you going to give the money to? Are you going to pay it locally or you're going to send it to people back home? Hajj, subhanallah, like 10 years in advance, you're preparing. Yes. If you are going to take your mom, your wife, your family, bookings, flights, hotels, ihram. For Ramadan, subhanallah, people just, you know, they find out that Ramadan is tomorrow. They freak out. They panic. They are not ready, you know. And maybe they start to prepare physically. They, they buy the food, the biryani, the, all the good stuff for Ramadan. But spiritually, they are not ready. So how to be ready for Ramadan? We know that the Prophet ﷺ and the Sahaba, the companions, they have three strategies. Strategy number one is the physical ibadah, physical acts of worship, like fasting, prayers, atikaf. The second type is financial. Donations, zakah, sadaqah, supporting good causes like ayira, mashallah. And we know that Rasulullah ﷺ was generous all year long and he was exceptionally generous in the month of Ramadan. The third type, which is the verbal ibadah, reading Quran, dua, istighfar, remembering Allah, and all these things. So basically, this is where the Quran comes in. And of course, the easiest one of them is the verbal ibadah, with your tongue. You read Quran, you remember Allah. And so basically, in order for you to develop this relationship with the Quran, number one, we need to understand that Ramadan is the month of the Quran. Allah says it repeatedly. So he chose Ramadan to reveal the Quran for a reason. And we know that everything is multiplied in this month. You donate, you get multiplied rewards. You pray namaz, multiplied rewards. You read Quran, multiplied rewards. So basically you have to have a personal connection with the Quran and reading the Quran. And 
some people think my relationship with the Quran stops at memorizing it. This is the maximum that I can do. And memorizing the Quran is an amazing thing. Allah will bless you and your family, your parents on Judgment Day. But this is just a basic level. Reading it and memorizing it, alhamdulillah. But there are some other levels. Doing tadabbur on the Quran, reflecting on what you're reading, not just reading the Quran like a newspaper. Understanding it fully and applying it to your life. Because subhanAllah, the way the Sahaba did it, uh, like Abdullah ibn Umar, it took him five years to finish Surah Baqarah, to memorize the Surah, because every time he memorized five verses, he wouldn't move to the next five until he fully understood these five and he applied them, right? So this was their connection with the Quran. So if Allah says, do this or don't do this, some of us pretend like it's talking to my cousin, it's not talking to me. But, yeah. you know, for the Sahaba, it was talking to them. So you need to build this relationship with the Quran and you cannot do this without understanding it, right? And this is where the clear Quran comes in. So I've done my, my best, alhamdulillah, with a big team of scholars and imams to make the Quran accessible to uh, adults, Muslims and non-Muslims, to children through the clear Quran for kids. Then Mashallah. recently, yep. as you said, we released the clear Quran uh, dictionary to make it easy for you know uh, non-Arabs who make up the majority of Muslims anyway, 85% of Muslims, they don't speak or understand the Arabic language. And subhanAllah, uh, six years ago, it was Ramadan, we didn't have coronavirus back then. Mm -hmm. So the masjid was packed, subhanAllah, in Ramadan. And, you know, so people come and mashallah, they're all over the place, man. They're in the hallway, on the roof, you open the fridge, people are praying inside, they're all <laughs> over the place. And one Pakistani brother, he said, the Imam, like, subhanAllah, I've been standing in namaz in Salat Taraweeh Qiyam for like an hour or more, and I don't understand what is being recited. And my Arab and, you know, brothers and sisters, whatever there is uh, an emotional ayah or verse, they start crying, but I don't know why they are crying. And I said, subhanAllah, let me, uh, let me try to do something about it. And alhamdulillah, it took me five years to finish this uh, dictionary. So if you don't speak any Arabic, you study it for like four to six months, depending on your pace, you will be able to understand everything. Alhamdulillah, and it has the pictures too. The yeah, bonus. Sheikh, we're, we're going we're gonna to get into the, the dictionary, Sheikh. Uh, so, you know, this, this thing is, it's, <clears throat> it, it's, some, it's, it's a nerve with me as well, right? It just strikes a nerve with me each time. I don't know why, and we don't need to get into this, but the the perception that's emerged um, within the Muslim community and to a degree in the non-Muslim community about the Quran and the relationship with that one has to have with the Quran is one, I believe, which is not authentic to its true objective and purpose. And what I mean by this is, mashallah, and, and this is not taking anything away from this, but when we, even if we study traditionally, if we study in the madrasas and so on and so forth, or, we, or even if we just get a good Islamic upbringing in our homes, in a Muslim family, the idea that comes across is, okay, this is the Quran, these are the words of Allah. If, especially the Indo-Pakistani community, the, the idea is, okay, you have to learn how to read this. Okay, so we go to teachers, we learn sometimes mosques. Uh, back in the day, it used to be very challenging because the sticks would come out sometimes, mashallah. Yeah, but these Same days, religion. alhamdulillah, there's no sticks, right? Yeah. But still, so you have to go there, you have to learn how to read, okay, which is important. And we learn to read, and then to top this up, if you want to go to another level, it's to learn how to read properly with the juid, right? Which is again very, very important, right? So we don't misread the Quran and mispronounce the words of Allah. But that's the focus. And you learn to do this proficiently. And you do this every single day if you can, right? Uh, or as regularly as you can. And that's where it stops. Sheikh, that's where it stops. It's like, yes. but for me, it just, it, it's, been, it's been eating away at me for so many years. Is that, well, doesn't Allah say that this is, you know, hudan lil muttaqin? This is hudan lil nas. This is guidance for humanity, for the people of taqwa. Now, how can something be guidance if it can't be understood, it's like when you're driving down a road, you know, and you know, you're lost, for, for example, and you've been driving for hours and you're just dying, you're desperate to see a sign, a road sign which will lead you out of it. Now, that road sign is not going to be useful unless you know what that sign means, unless you can read, interpret, and understand that sign. 
then it's useful to you. Otherwise, you'll just drive right by. It's a colorful little picture, right? And yes. it won't help you. But the Quran is guidance. But unless we understand what Allah is saying, how are we going to really maximize benefit from what Allah has given us? I mean, I don't, I don't know if you've noticed this, but it's just, I don't get it. I really don't understand. It's very common. It's very common. And now do you understand why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala didn't just send the Quran here, read this, khalas, you're good to go, bye-bye. No, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent Rasulullah to explain what is in the Quran, to guide people. And he was a living Quran, as Aisha radiallahu anha says in, in Bukhari, that he was the embodiment of the Quran. And so the Sahaba would come and ask the Prophet sallallahu about certain things in the Quran. He would teach them and they will see the Quran in his in his personality. Uh, so again, it doesn't stop at, at just reading it because this is not the whole purpose. And subhanAllah, if, if you move to Egypt, it's even worse. You know, in, in my village, subhanAllah, if you go to someone's house and they are playing the Quran in the background, the first question you ask, who died? Because usually <laughs> most people, they play the Quran if someone died. Yeah. As if the Quran is the book of the dead. Even though Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says repeatedly, including in Surah Yaseen, لِيُنذِرَ مَنْ كَانَ حَيًّا This Qur'an is a, is a reminder to those who are truly alive. Also, another use of the Qur'an in my country back home, you know, uh, car insurance is not fard. So if you want to have car insurance, it's okay. So people keep copies of the Qur'an on the, in the front or in the back for protection against theft, against accidents. Some people use the Quran, mashallah, for uh, they don't know how to pray istikhara, so they just open a random page, a random <coughs> verse. If it talks about something positive like Jannah, they go ahead and they do it. If it talks about choking and dying and Jahannam, they run away. I'm not going to do it. And so on and so forth. So these are the uses that many people have for the Quran. When you read in the Quran, subhanAllah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that this Quran is shifa. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uses the words carefully. Shifa, it's not ilaj. The difference is shifa is healing. Ilaj is medicine or treatment. And the difference is maybe medicine will help you, maybe not. And maybe it will have side effects. So I remember I, when I was young, one time I had a fever. And I went to the doctor and he gave me you know, the, this medicine. And I read the flyer that comes with the medicine. And it says, yes, it's going to heal your fever but it is going to give you heart attacks and blood pressure and kidney failure. And oh, whoa, oh, oh, whoa, oh, what is this, man? But for the Quran, it's a healing for sure. Shifa, linnas. So spiritual healing, uh, economical healing, uh, social healing, political healing, all the solutions are there in the Quran. SubhanAllah. And, and this is what we need to do, to, to read the Quran and find the solutions. Because uh, every prophet... Of course, the, the prophets are sampled in the Quran. They are not all mentioned in the Quran. Uh, there is a hadith that says Allah sent 124,000 prophets from Adam to Muhammad Wasallam. They are sampled in the Quran. So if you want to learn about social life, family dynamics, uh, the challenges facing our youth, siblings rivalry, you read the story of Yusuf salam, political corruption, Fir'aun and Musa salam, uh, financial corruption, Shu'aib salam. Uh, morality in society, Lut alayhi salam. So all the solutions are there, but subhanAllah, we do like the guy in this uh, story. I'm not sure if I told you this story before. Uh, a da'i, he told me that a relative of his uh, from Egypt a long time ago, it's a true story, he had an ear infection and he went to the doctor. Mm -hmm. And you know the story, right? Yeah. And uh, so the doctor gave him the tablets, take one every eight hours. So the guy came in, in the morning and he said, oh, the, the medicine is killing me. I took the first tablet. I was in pain. I took the second one. I was in tears. I took the third one. I couldn't sleep at night. So the doctor said, let me examine you. He looked and, and sure enough, he found the three tablets stuffed in his ear. Yep. So the medicine is correct, but the way of administering it, using it is wrong. So we need to reassess our relationship with the Quran, reading it, doing tadabbur on it, and have Alhamdulillah, no problem, applying it to our lives. And this is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed the Quran, not just to put it on the shelf uh, and so on and so forth. Shaykh, mm -hmm. can you uh, share some ayat from the Quran with us now, uh, without putting you in the spot too much, where something that comes to mind where Allah actually mentions how we're supposed to 
engage with the Quran. Yeah, like, so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, for example, says, Kitabun anzalnahu ilayka mubarakun liyadabbaru ayatihi. We have revealed this Quran, a blessed book, so people will deeply reflect on its meanings, right? So, and so on and so forth, this concept is repeatedly uh, mentioned in the Quran, that this book is for uh, tadabbur, reflection, is to uh, act upon it, and so on and so forth. Okay, Ismail Sheikh. So, okay, next next thing I want to ask you, we've okay, highlighted an issue, we've highlighted what the, what we should be doing instead, which is, okay, we learn to read the Quran, we learn the correct the juid of the Quran to the best of our ability, and we have to learn to understand what Allah is saying, right? Now, yes. obviously, we have, like we said earlier, we have the translation of the Quran, and we have your translation, the clear Quran translation, which, mashallah, is is one of the best, if not the best, English translations of the Quran that's available for several mm -hmm. reasons. And we've got another live stream on this that people can go and watch uh, to get more details on. Um, but say someone has done that already, okay? So say they come from the background where they may have learned how to read the Quran, they don't understand it, they've read a translation, but they're left wanting more. They're like, okay, I've read the English, but when I listen to the Quran, it's so beautiful. Only if I could merge the two now. When I'm listening to the Quran, I could understand what's being said without referring to the translation. Only if that could be possible. And when we have this thought, many of us, we think, not for me. Right? It's not going to happen for me. It's just those special people that were born as Arabs, that learn the Arabic language, that know the Arabic, that can understand it. Now, what would you say to someone that's in that position that really wants more? How could they go about making that a reality? That way they are listening to the Quran, they understand it. When they are reading the Arabic, they understand it. Is this possible, Sheikh? If it is possible, how, how can they go about achieving this and how long will it take? Yes, Jazakallah khair. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed the Quran in Arabic for a reason. So he didn't choose uh, English or Chinese or any other language because the Arabic language is so rich. Subhanallah, the Arabic language, if, uh, if you look at the vocabulary of Arabic, it has more than 12 million uh, words. That's 25 times more than the number of vocabularies in the English language, right? 25 times more. So in Arabic, we have more than a thousand words for a line. Like Usama, Hamza, Hizabr, Ghaif, Laif, Ghadamfar, Qaswar, all these names, man. Subhanallah. And friendship, you have like 25 levels of friendship. Sadiq, Rafiq, Hamim, Khalil. It depends on how close you are, right? You will not find this in any other language. So Arabic is so rich and words have meanings and shades of meanings and so on and so forth. So this is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala chose the Arabic language. It's very poetic. It's very, you know, beautiful to the ear. It's it's a very, it's it's an amazing language to say the least, right? So in order for you to connect with the uh, Quran, basically, if Arabic is your language, alhamdulillah, if Arabic is not your language, then uh, you can read tarjama, translation, but langu the, the translation is not going to give you everything. No translation is perfect. The clear Quran or any other Abdul Halim, uh, Ahmad Zaki Hamma, no translation is perfect. They just are humble, uh, decent, uh, you know, it's a decent human effort to explain the divine. Uh, we which are our best to come close to the meaning, and but we just capture one meaning. Yeah. But the Arabic language, it has meanings and shades of meanings. So, for example, in the story of Ibrahim alayhi salam, uh, it says, Faragh alayhim darban bil yameen. So he started to hit the idols, the statues, bil yameen. So in tafsir, they give you so many different meanings for the word yameen. It could be the right hand, mm -hmm. or it could mean with all of his power and might, or it could mean by the oath that he had taken to destroy those statues. All of these meanings are acceptable. There are some other meanings, but I'm just giving you a flavor. And yep. this is why Allah chose Arabic, because the word yameen has more than seven different meanings, right? So now, if Arabic is not your native tongue, you read the translation, it, we just give you one meaning. That's it. But all the metaphorical aspects, all the rhetorical devices, and all the uh, rhymes and rhythms in the ayah, they are lost. We just give you the, just the flavor. And there is nothing like reading the Quran in Arabic. With all due respect to the clear Quran. You know? <laughs> there is nothing like reading the Quran in Arabic. So... I say that the difference between the Quran in Arabic and in translation is like the difference between eating fresh and canned food. They are not the same, 
right? So if you are able to learn uh, the Quran in Arabic, even if uh, Arabic is not your native tongue or uh, or maybe it's a second language, if you can learn, for example, the Qamus uh, al-Quran, this dictionary of the Quran. So I structured it in a way that if you study it for like four to six months, depending on your pace, then you should be able to know everything. And believe it or not, this is good news. The Quran, Quran revolves around 2,000 words. That's it. 2,000 words. Once you know those 2,000 words, you know everything in the Quran. So uh, basically, by words, I mean roots. So, kataba, yaktubu, kitab. This is one root. Qala, yaqulu, qawla. This is another root. So the way I structured the book, so basically we have verbs, uh, and this makes up uh, about 60% of the book. Then you have nouns. Then you have particles like prepositions and, and so on. And yeah, so Sheikh, I have noticed you have structured this different from all other Arabic, English Arabic dictionaries that are available. Yes. You know, and so, for example, this breakdown into verbs, nouns and particles. What was the thinking behind that? Why did you do that? OK, so the, there are already many dictionaries of the Quran. Uh, first of all, they use old English thou and that and all that stuff and they make it difficult. And number two. Lots of redundant details, academic things. I made the book for for everyone, right? Uh, have students, average Muslims, new Muslims. So basically, if if you have a like a, an average or a regular dictionary, they they do things alphabetically. From what I have seen, people don't go past page number five or ten because they start with abba, abaka. And each of them appears only once in the entire Quran. Mm -hmm. So when you do the first, let's say, 50 pages, 100 pages, and you read in the Quran, you Never don't progress. recognize any of the words because yeah. they come you... like once or twice. Or what is this? Yep. So who cares about alphabetically? The most important thing is for you to understand whether you do it alphabetically or, you know, uh, thematically. Uh, it doesn't matter. What matters is the, the, the target. And the target is to understand the Quran. So I did it based on frequency and theme. Inshallah. So Inshallah. instead of starting with abaqa, which means to run away, escape, which appears only once in the mm -hmm. Quran, I started with uh, qala, which appears, uh, you know, many times in the Quran. 1,700 times in the Quran. Qala, right? Allah. So this means that you can see it an average of three to five times on the same page. So once you do the first 20 pages, qala, amana, kana, these words appear hundreds, if uh, if not 1,500 times in the Quran, then you, you can recognize the words immediately when you read. Mm -hmm. uh, there is another feature, and alhamdulillah, I'm, I'm grateful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for guiding me to this uh, feat. If you go to page 472, th this particular part is very special to me. I'm going to turn to it as well, Sheikh, as you're mentioning it. 472, <laughs> yes. yeah? Yes, 472. Yeah. Uh, we know that at Al-Azhar, uh, where I got my education, they used yep. to have mutun, like poems and stuff for for uh, for Nahu, like Al-Fiyat ibn Malik and Sarf and Aqidah and so on and so forth. You sum up a discourse uh, in a poem. So usually it's like a thousand lines, like, you know, uh, Ibn Malik and so on and so forth. Al Fiat Ibn Malik. So Alhamdulillah, I was able to put together, uh, you know, a poem. You can call it a poem, but I call it coupled rhymes. 242 lines that sum up all the entries, all the roots of the Quran. SubhanAllah. The 2,000 words of the Qur'an in just nine pages. So once you know those nine pages, you know all the roots, all the words of the Qur'an. That's it. That's amazing. MashaAllah. And so, I did so, it in a way with the rhymes and, so, you know, the coupled rhymes. So once you memorize those with the rhymes, it becomes super easy, inshallah. So what you're saying, Shaykh, if someone wants to memorize these nine pages, right, um, for example, you know, uh, would you say they memorize it with obviously the meanings of the words in the poems, yes. right? And then when they have that, then they have the entire catalog, the entire library in the head, basically. Yes. And of course, they need to go through the book to study the different forms of the word. Mm -hmm. Right. This is, uh, Sheikh, this is amazing, mashallah. You know, mm -hmm. you know, um, 
when I was really heavily focusing on it's about three years ago on, on Arabic, I saw one of the things I, re I realized and I categorized this way was there's there's two types of two types of ways we memorize, right? I called it this rotor memory and then there's sort of uh, trigger memory. Okay, what I call this trigger memory. And you've basically captured both of them in this dictionary. So rotor memory, what I referred to was, you know, when you memorize something as a rotor, you do it over and over again yes. till, till it becomes fixed in your head. Right. So, for example, kataba means, you know, to, to write book, etc. You get the roots from it. You keep memorizing it till you remember it. That's rotor memory. And, and the uh, trigger memory I refer to as words that you don't you can't recall off the top of your head. But when you see them in the Quran, it comes to you. Right. Yes. So it gets triggered. Now, what you've done, the entire dictionary, it, it, it facilitates trigger memory. So when you learn the words, you read it, and you study it. When you see the words in the Quran, it will come back to you, especially with the pictures that I want to get into in a second. Yes. Um, and then at the end here on page 472, you've catered for rotor memory as well. That if someone wants to actually memorize and learn it and keep it in mind, then you could do it by memorizing, the, memorizing these nine pages, basically. Yes, I'm a visual Probably. learner and I believe yeah. many people are the same way. So when I studied at Al-Azhar, I used to sum up, you know, words in an illustration because it will help me to remember. And I did the same thing here with the uh, Quran. So basically, I I'll, I'll, I'll hold it up so while you're speaking, so everyone can see what you've done. Basically, the yeah. Images so stuff, I inshallah. tried to sum up words in in pictures and illustrations. So, mashallah, I got some quality pictures here, and it took me like three months to be able to find you know, word, uh, pictures, illustrations that reflect the true meaning of the word. Yeah, and yeah. say, for example, I'm going to give you this example here. I'm not sure if you can see it. It's on page 57. So the word akala, root 86. So I numbered the roots. So root 86. You see the guy who is eating? Mm -hmm. So this word has two meanings in the Quran, to eat food and to consume illegal gain, money. <laughs> So in, I incorporated both in the same wow. picture. And I did the same Amazing. thing with Mashallah. other uh, pictures. And yeah, I, I, this is what I was going to mention earlier, Sheikh. It's like the, the pictures aren't just, okay, we're going to add in pictures with the visual element. They're actually well thought out. So every picture contains, you've tried to capture almost all of the meanings of that particular word in the picture. So this word uh, where you, uh, entry number 15, Nawasa, where you get Nas and Insan from. Yes. Uh, you've got an image, which I found really interesting, of a thumbs up, right? Which is made of people gathered together. Yes. Right? So it, and the meaning of the word, as you've written here, uh, a positive, cozy feeling one has, especially with people they can relate to. So it, encapture, it captures the idea of people, that the, the words, you, words you get from the root, which is Nas and Insan. It captures community and people coming together. And it captures positivity, which is the meaning of the word. Yes. Now, I'm, I'm not going to forget that. It's in my head now. You know, and it's very powerful because now when I read the word insan, nas in the Quran, I know it's not only referring to people, but it's, it's now further uh, enriched my understanding of that word because I know it has these connotations to it. It's fine. Yes. Another quick example. The word ras in the Quran has basically two meanings. Either head, your head, ras, or the principal amount of money. So we got both. <laughs> Allah. And also for those who, who are familiar with, you know, uh, regular dictionaries, they want to find a word alphabetically. I put an alphabetical index at the end of the book, page 483. So you just go to the back and find the word alphabetically. Mm -hmm. So they are listed. Mashallah. And the beginning of each letter is highlighted. You see the ba, the ta, you know, so you can easily find the word. Easy, mashallah. That was the only thing I was going to, I remember I was going to message you, Sheikh. You know, I, I need a, I need a, um, I need an alphabetic dictionary in this dictionary. And yeah, then I flicked to the page. It was Send there, it was right the biryani. there. <laughs> you, literally, you made it a biryani in, a, in the most positive way possible. It's all there. Everything you need is there. <laughs> So it caters for everyone, mashallah. And you've also got a new feature that I found really amazing in the beginning of the dictionary, where and I've not seen this anywhere, mashallah, where you've actually, and this is this is going to help the English speaking audience primarily, right? And I've seen this in the Urdu, Sheikh, by the way, because you know there's loads of words that are similar in Urdu to Arabic. Yes. yes. But you've done this with the English, which I which I, I started laughing and I was just I was amazed, mashallah, because. What you've shown is that there are words in the English that have similar 
as far as sound is concerned, the way they pronounce in the Arabic. So they have similar counterparts and they share the meaning. They have the same meaning. True. SubhanAllah. Like the word Maraja in the Quran, Maraja al Bahraini in Surah Rahman. Yeah. Maraja in Arabic means merge in English. Maraja, merge. Kaf and cave. There are so many examples. Allah. Ifk and fake. Same meaning. Munhamir, mm -hmm. hammering. And so on. So How did you come across this, Sheikh? Was this just something you just realized, or did you pick this up from somewhere else? We're, we're, while I was working on the dictionary, I found out that the, the sound of some words, they, they sound the same and the meaning is identical. Mm -hmm. So I did some research and I listed a couple of dictionaries that cover this Sound. aspect of words in the English language of, of Arabic origins. So I listed them in the, uh, in the references. Subhanallah. And the word qistas, justice. Subhanallah. Subhanallah. Sheikh, I want to ask you something. So, you know, you said, and even in the beginning of the dictionary, you mentioned, which I think, again, is very motivational. You write, you know, in the right in the beginning of your introduction, you mentioned that, you know, if you want to, you, sh you know, if you want to, you should study this with the objective of studying it as beginning to end, reading through it, because that's how it's set up. Yes. And you also have highlighted here, you know, four months, 120 days, you know, studying, for example, four pages a day, six months if you study three pages a day, one year if you study 1.5 pages. Yes. You've made this very clear. Now, if someone wants to, like, okay, go on this journey of spending the next year or six months in studying page by page the entries, how would you specifically recommend studying the entries, right? So would you, for example, say, okay, entry number 235, start right at the top, uh, you know, read the word, see the picture, see the definitions, uh, see how many times it's mentioned the Quran, read the examples from the Quran that you've given, Quranic usage, and yes. work through it like this? Or would you say anything else for someone to do when okay. they're doing this? So if you see a root here, uh, not sure if you can see it, Kafara, mm -hmm. this one here. So this is page uh, eight, page eight. Yep. So basically, I listed all the different forms of uh, the word Kafara. It comes down to cover, basically. And as I mentioned to you, uh, Imran, that uh, there, there's something here, a feature in this book that I haven't seen in other, uh, in any other English uh, dictionary, which is to highlight the connection between all the different meanings of the same root. Mm -hmm. Like kafara means to, to become a disbeliever, to cover faith with disbelief, or to be ungrateful, to cover a blessing with ingratitude, and so on and so forth. Or a, a kafir, a farmer who covers a seed with dirt. So... Uh, it, you know, so cover, cover, cover to cover something is is the meaning that is running through all the meanings. So they're all listed here. I listed them. Yeah, the directions are messed up. Yeah. So basically, you see all the different meanings here listed, mm -hmm. and this is the main thing that you need to know. And I gave you how many each of these meanings is mentioned in the Quran. Under each of them you will find all the different forms of this same meaning. So let's say meaning number one in the middle uh, column. Mm -hmm. I gave you all the different forms. You don't have to memorize all of them. You just need to focus on the examples because in the examples, the words that are highlighted in blue, in the next section, it's in red. These are the most frequently mentioned forms of this meaning in the Quran. So you can easily recognize them in the Quran. The least mm -hmm. ones, they are not, you know, I haven't given examples for them. I just focus on the most frequently mentioned ones. Okay, so so just to summarize what you're saying, Sheikh, is this is a good example, Kafara, which you've given seven different definitions of that word. Yes. And then from the Quranic usage perspective, you've gone into those definitions, highlighted how the word is formed for each definition. Yes. And then you're saying, don't worry about the exact all of the ones you mentioned here, but instead look at the, then what follows, which is look at the examples you've given from the Quran, where you've highlighted the ones which which appear the most, basically, yes. um, in that in that form with the meaning, basically. Yes, I examined all the uh, references or uh, the mentions in the Quran, and I chose the most frequent ones. And uh, the book lists seven thousand eight hundred and thirty-five examples from the Quran, highlighting. The most frequently mentioned forms. So I made it super easy for you. Sheikh, this picture could have been better. This one. How could you do it? <laughs> All you had to do was add, change this man with Richard Dawkins. That's it. <laughs> 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 they would have been perfect. 
<laughs> anyway, um, yeah, Sheikh, this is this is mashallah, this is brilliant, Sheikh. So, you know, look, I'm I'm one. I was looking for something like this because I was having to resort to, um, you know, several different books. So I have I had two. I was using the, digitally. I was using Lane's Lexicon. I was referring to Hans Way, mainly Lane's Lexicon, and then I had some Urdu dictionaries that I was referring to. And then I had uh, uh, an amazing three-volume uh, Quran study by, I think, is uh, Sheikh Mohar Ali. He's got three volume of the Quran where he goes through the roots. But oh, this, alhamdulillah, this is going to make life so much easier for me because I'm just going to focus on this now, inshallah, and use this continuing on from here. Um, and inshallah, I may actually do the whole thing as you've recommended, which is go through the whole thing once again and just see where I, where I end up at the end now. Okay, how, how much has that increased my vocab? Because the thing is, Sheikh, you know, one of the things you realize that, you know, when it comes to Arabic, Quranic Arabic, you will find many grammar courses, right? Yes. Teaching you the grammar because it's more quantifiable. You know, you can tell someone, okay, you spend three months studying the grammar because there's only a finite number of rules that you have to learn. And when you yes. know the basics, you're good. You're, you're good to go, basically. But when it comes to vocabulary, uh, it, you know, as Sheikh Fadi says as well, you know, it's a lifelong journey. It's not going to be something you can master in a, in a day or a month or a year. Sure. Um, because there's always words. And subhanAllah, I was, you know, Sheikh, I recently I was uh, reading a paper on uh, some of the early recipients of the Quran, um, especially the, the Quraysh and those that had disliked the Prophet and his message. And something that happened, I noticed over and over again, uh, even uh, the poet that was sent to challenge him, um, his name is not coming to me, um, uh, very famous poet amongst the Arabs, the best amongst them, and he was sent to challenge the Prophet ﷺ. And one thing they would all say, or many of them would say when they would listen to the Qur'an, this is the Arabs at the time, that I understood much of it, but there were some parts I didn't understand, right? Now, the scholars obviously mentioned that this could be one of a few reasons, either that they didn't understand some of the complex vocabulary of the Qur'an, although they were the Arabs and the best Arabs at the time with the language, or it could be that their hearts were sealed and that they couldn't inter that they wouldn't go through to them. But subhanAllah, so it, it should be quite motivating for those that are non-Arab as well. That look, even the Arabs that were the best at the Arabic language at the time of the Prophet ﷺ potentially didn't initially know some of the meanings of some of the words, right? Yes. So it's not that, you know, it's just you don't know the meanings of the words of the Arabic. You can learn it as well. It's just you're starting at a far earlier stage than they were, but you can still build up to that point. And this yes. book, inshallah, is going to help <clears> you do that. You know, Hassan ibn Thabit, عنه, he was the poet of Rasulullah He was always defending him. He is a, he is a giant when it comes to poetry. He was from Medina. So when the Quran came down, and in Surah Yusuf, it says, min The wife of Al-Aziz, she gave each of the women a knife. And he said, I didn't know the, the word Sikina because in Medina, we didn't use Sikin, we used Mudya. So I had to ask about the meaning of this word. He was a he was a giant. He was a poet. He says it's used in Mecca in Quraysh, but it was not used in Medina. And this is why I had to learn this this meaning, right? Yeah, but of course he understood like ninety nine percent of the words, yes. but there was a few words that you know that he didn't know, and mm -hmm. and he had to learn, right? Yeah. So and it's just we we we've got a few more to learn. But Alhamdulillah, you made it easy for us to learn, which is uh, you know now there's no excuses literally for us, Panna, especially if we you know understand the value of the Quran. You know it's and 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 you know uh, Imran, you are my brother, and I love you more than biryani. Uh, <laughs> that's a good. That's a big thing coming from you, Sheikh. Mashallah, because we know how much you love okay. biryani. Subhanallah, I love biryani so much, and this is why me achieved the bolta home. Anyway, <laughs> uh, so as I said, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, We made the Quran easy to remember and study and memorize. Everything is easy about the Quran. And subhanAllah, as a dalil, as a proof, most of the international Quran hiv competitions, they are dominated by non-Arabs. People from Pakistan, people from Nigeria, people from Indonesia, subhanAllah. They beat Arabs in memorizing the Quran. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala already made it easy. The most important thing is, is how you study it. Don't make it difficult for yourself. You know, just use something easy, accessible to memorize the Quran. When it comes down to 2,000 words, that's it. 2,000 words and khalas, you're done. The other day, I was watching a show on YouTube. So this guy 
from uh, you know from China. He was traveling in Jordan, and he or maybe Japan or or China. So he fell in love with a Jordanian sister. He accepted Islam and he learned the Arabic language just to make his wife happy, right? So if this brother, this new Muslim brother, learned the Arabic language, he's able to communicate in Arabic with his 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 wife and her in-laws in Arabic out of her out of love for her. What about you? Do you love the Quran? Do you love Allah? Would you be willing to make this sacrifice? Just like this guy in the story, right? So I think it's worth the effort. So instead of spending your whole life complaining and whining, I don't read Arabic, I don't understand. All it takes is just four to six months, you are done. You're good to go. Khalas, finished. Mashallah. Mashallah. Sheikh, this is brilliant. And just to summarize, Sheikh, um, obviously, I want, I want you to sort of come back to the original point, a sort of brief study program you can suggest to the brothers and sisters, including the dictionary, the translation, and some other things. But before that, Obviously, mashallah, you know, many people are going to be interested in where they can get this dictionary, you know. Uh, so I know it's available in the UK at Darul Salaam, yes. uh, which is everyone knows in the UK. Darul Salaam is, the, if not the biggest, one of the big, one of if the biggest or the biggest, you know, Islamic books publishing company. They have stores all over the UK. So you can pick this up from Darul Salaam. Um, but if you say not in the UK, where else is it available at the moment? Uh, you can go to our website, theclearquran.org slash dictionary. Theclearquran.org dictionary, and you will find it there, inshallah. Okay, is it in uh, is it in the uh, um, uh, Kindle version at the moment as well? Or is not, it just in the hard copy? Not the yet, the hard cover. Okay. And inshallah, we will be working on an app. I'm going to be teaching, uh, you know, this uh, course. I'm going to put it on a platform. Uh, so people can access the videos, they can do the uh, the uh, you know the exercises, the quizzes to mm -hmm. to master the uh, the uh, the book, inshallah. Inshallah, Sheikh. One more, okay, so just to summarize. Okay, we've this is we've talked about vocabulary. I know you've got some things in the beginning in the introduction. I didn't look at it in detail, but on grammar as well, some yes. rules and things to keep in mind. Uh, would would you say there is enough in here for basic grammar for people that want to be able to understand the Quran, or would you recommend anything alongside this? Well, studying the Arabic grammar is a lifelong journey. So, mm -hmm. for anyone to learn a language, just like me, when I started to learn the English language after the age of twenty, I focus on two things: the grammar and the vocabulary. Right. So, basically, this book dictionary it focuses on the vocabulary in the introduction i gave you a brief overview of the basics that you need to learn to be able to study this book how to make the distinction between a noun and a verb and a particle and the different forms of verbs past present and future so i get how you know how to uh, distinguish a singular from uh, plural and so on and so forth. i just gave you the basics so okay. this would be enough uh, but as I said, if you want to expand your knowledge of the Arabic grammar, then I recommend uh, uh, Bayina, uh, Bayina TV. They have, you know, an amazing course on, on grammar. So if this is something that you can study. Then you can focus on the vocabulary as well. Inshallah. Mm -hmm. Brilliant, Sheikh. Um, so you would say if someone wants to take a serious, get into the serious study of the Quran now, they've made that decision, especially, you know, in Ramadan and they want to make this commitment. So would you say have a good translation at hand, like the clear Quran? this dictionary um and is there any other resources you would say someone needs to have as part of their study uh, toolkit how would you how so, would you go about it what would you suggest as a program so again if you want to learn the quran properly then you start with good translation uh, the clear quran is is a decent one then uh if someone is a beginner a, a revert a student maybe they can start with the clear quran for kids, which is for students, basically, it will give you a good grounding on the Quran and the dictionary, and you supplement this with the grammar. If you want to study with, uh, you know, uh, Bayina TV, for example, they they have a good program. Uh, as you can see, the book is structured in three chapters. Each chapter is broken down into ten sections. So ten, ten, ten. So I recommend you do the first section of the first chapter. Then move to the first section of part uh, chapter two, then the first section of part three. Then you do the second of each and so on and so forth. If you want to go by pages, you can do a page. Okay. So, Sheikh, you're saying basically three sections, right? If you can show us where the break is. So, we have the verbs, 
uh, section here. So you're saying there's 10 sections within each of the three sections, right? Yeah. So in the table of contents, you see mm -hmm. the three chapters, chapter one, two, three. Each of them is broken into 10 sections. Mm -hmm. So I made it super easy. So in the verb section, every 20 pages, make up one section. Mm -hmm. So you do one section, which is, uh, if you see number one here, then you move to number one in the nouns. Then you move to number one in the particles. Then you move to two, two, two in each section. Or if you want to go by pages, one page is a, a day, two, three. Uh, depending on your pace, inshallah. Is that because of the frequency of the words that are used? Is that what yes. you're saying? Study it like that. Okay. Yes. So basically, if you start at the beginning of, let's say, the verbs, so we have qala, which is verb number one. It is mentioned 1722 times. Mm -hmm. And when you go all the way to the back of the verb section, you will only see words that appear only once in the entire Quran. So we start with the most frequently mentioned ones, then we move all the way to the least mentioned ones, right? It, the noun section is based on theme and frequency. So for example, uh, here you will see the angels are all listed together, starting with the most frequently uh, mentioned angel. Then you move to Anbiya, the prophet. So we start with uh, Prophet Musa alayhi salam. He is number one when it comes to Anbiya. So here is the section. And of course, I have illustrations and pictures for most of the entries in the book. But for the names of Allah, the names of the Anbiya, out of respect, we put their names, mashallah, in beautiful calligraphy in the Thulus uh, font. So you have Musa alayhi salam number one. Ibrahim is number two based on frequency. But they are all listed based on theme, prophets, and frequency within the same theme then we have body organs listed together family members we have fruits vegetables we have you know animals and birds so the theme makes it super easy inshallah mashallah this is brilliant the body Zabra, organs yeah. here they're all listed together alhamdulillah this is excellent sheikh mashallah this is inshallah like i said this is going to make uh, yeah anyone that's wanted to do this which is to try and understand the quran directly in arabic uh, this is going to make their life so much easier, inshallah. And it's like a one-stop resource for for anyone that wants to do this. So brothers and sisters, you know, obviously it's not for everyone, meaning that anyone that doesn't want to study the Arabic and understand the Arab Quran in Arabic, but those that do and have this ambition, this, and I could tell you from my personal experience, struggling to find resources over the past three or four years. Um, and I remember I told you this, Sheikh, as well, when you mentioned this to me about a year ago, over a year ago, it's like uh, you know, they, I in the I've literally got in my at home. I've literally bought every almost every single English Arabic dictionary that's available, uh, aside from Lanes because it's very big and very expensive and it's not in yes. print most of the time. Um, but it, you know, this is unlike anything I have seen in the English language. You know, it's it literally, uh, and I'm not just saying that because it's you or it's the dictionary. This mashallah is going to be a phenomenal resource for myself and I'm sure for many, many people uh, for years to come, decades to come, inshallah. Uh, mm -hmm. So yeah, brothers and sisters, if this is something you are into and you want to do, then definitely pick this up, inshallah. Uh, Sheikh, anything else you want to say before we wrap up today? Zakallah. So I'm, I'm in the field of translation and da'wah and serving the Muslim community as an imam. So I know the struggles and the challenges that people have when it comes to the Quran. So I know I'm not like an outsider or, you know, uh, so basically this book is there to make things easy for you to learn the Quran and, and to study the Quran, right? It's not just an academic work that is very complicated or very, no, it's, it's easy. It's for everyone to make it easy for you, inshallah, to study the, uh, the, the Quran. And it's structured in, in a way that makes it super easy and fun to study, inshallah. And I spent five years working on this book. I put inshallah. in literally thousands of hours. I got some gray hairs over here. So I've done my part. <laughs> so you have no excuse, khalas. Inshallah. Jazakallah khair, Shaykh. May Allah bless you. Um, right. Inshallah, we'll get you on a few more times. Uh, get into a bit more detail on certain sections. Maybe you can, maybe you can do just some small sessions with us where you sort of explain a few words and do a few classes with everyone. Inshallah, online inshallah. live or something. We'll think of something. Inshallah. Zakallah khair, brothers and sisters. May Allah bless you, and uh, I will speak to you next time. Salam alaikum. Zakallah khair. Salam alaikum.